Mr. Mr. President, Bill. I rise today to express my deep concern with the tax reform bill that the Senate Finance Committee is likely to approve later this week. The latest version of this massive tax bill, which will impact every single American, was only released to the public late Tuesday night. Less than 48 hours later, the Finance Committee is ramming through this bill on a party-line vote without any hearings and without a thorough review of the bill. I strongly disagree with this process, with this closed-door process of developing the substance of the bill, which skews the benefits to the wealthy at the expense of middle-class families, and with this bill's irresponsible cost of $1.7 trillion over 10 years. But I also want to tell my colleagues and the President that there is still an opportunity for us to do the right thing and to work together on tax reform. We should follow the example of the last time there was successful tax reform enacted by Congress. This was led by Republican President Ronald Reagan, Democratic Speaker of the House Tip O'Neill, and members of Congress from both parties who worked together back in 1986 to pass major tax reform legislation. Sure, they had strong disagreements, but they held lengthy public debates, compromised on both sides of the aisle, and eventually passed a major tax reform bill that was bipartisan, was fair, and did not add to our deficits and national debt. For some reason, my Republican colleagues seem to have forgotten the example of the last time that the Congress actually passed tax reform. It happened because both parties worked together. It happened because both parties compromised. And while I believe there is still time for us to undertake this approach, what we're seeing right now is the exact opposite. Mr. President, I think that is a big mistake. When I'm on the train back to Wilmington or when I'm at home in my state of Delaware hearing from my constituents, my message about this bill is simple. I'm worried what this bill will do to our fiscal health as a country and the middle class, and you should be too. Let me start by quoting a story from the Washington Post today, whose headline reads, quote, Senate tax bill cuts taxes of wealthy and hikes taxes on families earning under 75,000 over a decade. Let me repeat that. The Senate tax bill cuts the taxes of the wealthy and hikes taxes on families earning under $75,000. This story, Mr. President, is based on a report from the nonpartisan Joint Commission on Taxation which shows that the claims from President Trump and my Republican colleagues that this bill is all about tax relief for the middle class are simply wrong. A quote again from this story, by the year 2027, Americans earning 30 to 75,000 a year, solidly middle class folks, would be forced to pay more in taxes, even though people earning over 100,000 would continue to get substantial tax cuts. Unfortunately, though, that's not the end of my concerns with this legislation. I'm also alarmed by how much this bill would add to our nation's budget deficits and by the long-term impacts it would have on our debt. According to the nonpartisan Congressional Budget Office, this tax bill, this Republican-only tax bill, will cost over $1.7 trillion over 10 years. That's $1.7 trillion with a T. But what happened? to my colleagues who've spent years talking about the dangers posed by a growing national debt. Now these very same senators and representatives are willing to put almost $2 trillion on our nation's credit card. It's an astounding figure, more than twice as large as the emergency stimulus package Congress passed in 2009 to prevent the next Great Depression. It's more than twice as much as the much maligned so-called bailout that Congress authorized to prevent the collapse of the financial system. And what does $1.7 trillion buy us? What is the great return on investment that would justify borrowing $1.7 trillion, mostly from China, in a time of near record low unemployment? Speaker of the House Paul Ryan publicly bragged that their tax plan would produce 1 million jobs. That sounds good, but not when you consider the cost. My math may not be great, but if you spend $1.7 trillion to get a million jobs, that's 1.5 million per job. That's not a great return on investment. To add insult to injury, the majority believes they can use this bill to also cut access to health care for millions of Americans because they've decided 
the last moment to include a repeal of the Affordable Care Act's individual mandate. A critical part of that bill, which, excuse me, that law, which helps ensure a healthy risk pool, which in turn lowers premiums. Those who actually work in healthcare know this is a bad idea. That's why the American Medical Association, the American Academy of Family Physicians, the American Hospital Association, the America and America's health insurance plans have all come out against the inclusion of individual mandate repeal in this bill, saying, quote, eliminating the individual mandate by itself will result in a significant increase in premiums, which would substantially increase the number of uninsured Americans. Mr. President, the nonpartisan CBO agrees and found that repealing the mandate will cause 13 million people to lose their health care by 2027, and average premiums would increase about 10 percent each year. The inclusion of the mandate repeal to pay for corporate tax cuts will hurt middle class families across our country. It's politics at its worst, throwing aside the needs of our constituents to ensure that a small group of the wealthy get wealthier. That's because at the core, this bill is based on a premise, proven false time and again, that tax cuts for the richest Americans and most profitable corporations will somehow trickle down to help the majority of working Americans. We know that's not how our economy has actually worked. Even President Reagan's own budget director, David Stockman, said yesterday this bill isn't going to increase wages for the middle class. The Senate bill proposes we cut the top corporate rate nearly in half, exempt more wealthy individuals from the estate tax, which impacts only the top 0.2 percent of Americans, repeal the alternative minimum tax, which affects those making hundreds of thousands annually, and cut tax rates for those earning over a million. Altogether, the core elements of this plan amount to $1.7 trillion in tax cuts, and my Republican colleagues are simply asking us to trust them that the benefits will somehow reach the middle class. If that isn't enough to prove this bill being rushed through in today's markup is bad policy, my colleagues in the majority went one step further in this latest version by eliminating all tax breaks for middle class families in eight years while making the tax cuts for corporations permanent. This means that millions of middle class families will see a tax hike in the future in order to fund permanency for corporate tax breaks. And that's just not right. So Mr. President, here's what I think we should do. Let's slow down. Let's work together, Republicans and Democrats, to pass a bill that's actually good for all Americans. I believe we can get that done. I think it is our job and our duty. And we don't have to start from scratch. There are bipartisan ideas. There are introduced bipartisan tax bills that could make our code simpler and fairer and more effective. And I'll just mention two examples of bills I've introduced. One with Republican Senator Shelley Moore Capito and another with Republican Senator Pat Roberts that encourage manufacturers to use Made in America parts and incentivize companies that invent something here to make it here. I've introduced another bill with Republican Senator Jerry Moran. It's got eight bipartisan co-sponsors and with Republican Congressman Ted Poe that would alter the tax code to boost every aspect of American energy industry, from oil and gas to the latest renewable and clean energy technologies. Mr. President, these are just a few ideas, but they represent a simple truth, that we can and should work together in tax reform instead of making this one more pointless partisan battle. The same thing's true for our health care system. The American people have overwhelmingly said they want a bipartisan and open process to fix health care, not a one-party scheme by either party that throws our system into chaos with no plan to replace it. So I encourage President Trump and Republican leaders to stop trying to pass tax reform with only Republicans and to reach across the aisle to work with Democrats and pass something we can all get behind.